Um, hi. Um, well, let's let's get this party started. I, my name is Bill Dwight. I'm the city councilor at large who is the presiding officer of Legislative Matters, which you are attending right now is a joint meeting of the Northampton Planning Board and the Legislative Matters Committee of the Northampton City Council, the purpose of which to hold a joint hearing uh, that we'll get to in a moment, if you can bear with us. Um, and first of all, condolences to all you people who live and die on Facebook or Instagram. I'm sorry. That will just give you more opportunity to devote your attentions to us. Uh, this first off, will let you know that this meeting is being audio and video recorded via the miracle of Zoom. And uh, that's the purpose of letting you know that is informed consent. If you don't want to be seen, don't turn on your camera. If you don't want to be heard, don't turn on your microphone. Um, what will I, actually, um, so Laura, are you able to call a roll for both committees? Do you have yes, everyone I am. in line? Okay. Sure. Okay. Councillor Dwight. I'm here. Councillor Shara. Uh-oh. Oh, she's... No, hmm. I'm here. There. Sorry. Here, here. Okay. Um, Councillor Maori. Here. And Councillor Thorpe. Here. And then um, Member Kohout. I know he's there. Here. He's here. He has water. <clears throat> Member Elkins. Uh, not present. I don't, I don't see. Her. Okay. Um, member Coriat. Here. Member, member Fowler. Elkins. Here. Oh, was member Elkins there? I see member Elkins image on here, but, um, <clears throat> okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm right. sorry. Continue. Um, on. I'm sorry. Member Fowler. I, yep. Here. Okay. Member <laughs> Granat. Not present, perhaps. Uh, member no, Tate. Here. Member Taylor. Here. Member White. Here. And Member Whitehill. Here. All right, we definitely have a quorum in both bodies. Thank you all. Uh, please mark uh, Member Elkins as present. Okay, thank you. Councillor Dwight, can I ask a point of order that I'm yes. uh, I, at the risk of uh, annoying a bunch of people. I'm just looking on the city calendar and I don't see this. I see this posted as legislative matters, but I don't see planning. You don't see it posted as a mm. joint hearing? Yeah, it's posted as a joint hearing. So I didn't put a separate posting for the planning board. Oh, I see. So if you open the agenda, it says it at the top, but it doesn't say yeah. it on the calendar. Is that, and so that's okay, Carolyn? Um, it's it was also on advertised the that way. Yeah. It, and, it, and it was advertised as well. That we yes, it was advertised the... as a joint hearing. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. Sorry. No, that's a reasonable question. And it's in the agenda center as a joint hearing, but I mean, yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's funny that it doesn't translate onto the calendar. Is that? <clears throat> All right. So, anyway. Talk, we'll have a talk with Civic Plus. We'll have a stern talking to them. Um, so let me say, if there, this, as I said, is a public hearing, um, but we will start with public comment. And just to let you know, I'm doing this through an iPad, iPad, so I can't see all your raised hands. So if you're, if there's thousands of people wishing to talk, um, please indicate on your respective device wherever Zoom has hidden the raised hand feature. Uh, do it that way because you may raise your hand on the screen and I might not have you on my screen here. So, Councilor Dwight, um, just a point of uh, or uh, clarification. Information. Information, yeah. point of information. If you would sure. like to see the subtitles, you can go to more and the dot, 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 your lower right hand screen and hit more and then it will say show subtitles if any of the public commenters, if there are any, need to need that uh, closed caption option. So this is public comment. Um, also, let you know that when we uh, when we open the hearing, this I mean you're welcome to speak to the item that the most the principal item on our agenda here. So, um, 
just think public comment might be moot at that point. But if you have some other comments that you want to make relative to planning and or legislative matters of bears, um, you feel free to come, uh, raise your hand now and you can comment. I'm not seeing anything as I scroll through the screen. All right. Well, then let's get to it. This is uh, this is a public hearing, and uh, this is by Matt in, in accordance with Mass General Law. Uh, this was advertised as such, and that an opportunity for people to speak to the item before us, which is an amendment of the uh, uh, Section 350-3.4 zoning map to add additional smart growth overlay district and overlaying on the existing urban residential B, URB, AKA URB, uh, district at Chapel Street. Um, and I'd accept a motion to open the public hearing. Move to open the hearing. Second. Uh, Councilor Shara made the motion. And I believe that was Councilor Thorpe seconding. Correct. Okay, Laura, would you call a roll for the vote? on opening the public hearing. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Mayori. Yes. And Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Did I continue and call the role of planning? Would you please? Sure. Um, Member Kohout. Yes. Member Elkins. Yes. Member Coriat. Yes. Member Fowler. Yes. Member Tate. Yes. Member Taylor. Yes. Member White. Yes. And Member Whitehill. Yes. Okay. We are, the public hearing has, is assembled and for folks, um, the normal process is to hear from proponents and then uh, after that opponents or people who are neutral. But in this case, I think given, um, given the absence of evidence of people here to discuss it, I would, uh, I would ask that first uh, staff member, the staff for planning department, Carolyn Mish is here. And Carolyn, if you could just lay out in accessible layman terms as to what it is we're dealing with here. Sure, I'd be happy to. Good afternoon, early evening. Um, I. I think it'll be helpful to um, share my screen. So if that's okay, I'll just put the map up. I know of several members probably already have this in front of them, but um, I'll go ahead and do that. Can you see the ordinance uh, amendment um, with the map on it in front of you? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I have a um, sort of a pull out, a zoomed out map um, below this, but, just to um, show you, and actually, I think I'm going to move down um, to the next screen. Uh, might be easier to see. Um, but what we're talking about is um, what we refer to as a smart growth overlay, which is under um, Mass General Law Chapter 40R. And it's uh, a separate piece sort of outside of zoning. Um, that is an incentive um, designation by the, the state set up this type of zoning for municipalities to adopt in um, areas where there's accessible um, modes of transportation and in urban centers or accessible by walking or other modes. Um, the idea of setting up this smart growth, these smart growth districts across the Commonwealth was actually an incentive for developing housing. And the incentive is that if communities are approved or adopt these districts that have to fit very specific parameters that are set, established by the state, um, then and then housing, affordable housing is subsequently built um, within these districts, there is a pot of money that um, cities can access um, for each unit that's developed. There's an incentive zoning. Once you pass the zoning, there's a pot of money that, that you get from the state. And then if housing units are actually built, you get um, another um, amount of money from the state for each unit to sort of offset the impacts of, of potentially 
um, higher density developments within communities. So you all have seen this in the past. Um, the first smart growth overlay was actually uh, um, also proposed at the state hospital. It was the first one in the city that we did um, maybe eight years ago. And so if you see this yellow green boundary here in the middle of the screen, which is sort of the very middle of the state hospital, and then the blue um, linear boundary to the um, east of that, those were the first two smart growth overlay districts that the city adopted. The state approved them. Um, we received um, a bonus payment from the state for establishing the zoning district. And then as the units were built out in, um, in these areas, um, the city received funding and that funding has actually gone to traffic mitigation and actually all of it has gone into the main street design process. That's what's allowed us to start this process of rethinking and redesigning main street to make it safer for pedestrians and bicyclists and people of, in, um, with all different um, abilities and, and capacities. So um, we've already taken advantage of this zoning by the state. Um, we've also expanded it to another area a couple of years ago off of Bridge Street, which um, was um, uh, came in as a project for um, Valley CDC was redoing an SRO um, project down off of Bridge Street. And so we created a smart growth overlay for that um, property, um, which also resulted in payments to the city for those units that were created. Um, the reason why um, this um, is overlay is different from our other zoning is because it allows much higher density than the underlying zoning would allow. And that's the whole goal from the state's purposes, um, state's point of view is they really want cities to start um, creating housing to meet the demands of the Commonwealth. Um, so We've already got a smart growth overlay at the state hospital. Um, and what we're proposing is to add this um, dashed purple rectangular parcel to the, on the lower left of this screen. Um, that's about 1.1 acres of land that was previously um, allocated as part of the state hospital redevelopment was allocated for a fire station. Um, 20 Years ago, the city was concerned that as the state hospital built out, we might want to have a fire station located there to address the higher um, sort of the shift in um, population in this portion of the city. But as time went on, we um, realized that we didn't want, there were no plans and there no need to build a new fire station. And so this uh, property essentially is um, surplus for the purposes of a fire station. So we're looking at um, uh, opportunities to create more affordable housing. Um, and we think that it makes sense to increase the allowable density right there sort of at the edge of the state hospital um, and also potentially get um, state incentive payments for each unit that is built. Um, if the city adopts the zoning, it doesn't necessarily mean that an applicant would come forward and use that, but it's another tool to um, help that if the zoning, if the units are gonna be built there anyway, then why not have them um, give back to the city as much as the state is willing to do that. Um, and so you'll see also there's another purple outline on Laurel Street. That's a parcel that was rezoned smart growth overlay C as well a couple of years ago. And Valley CDC is working on um, designing a project there for affordable housing units. Um, and so as a if this is adopted, then there'll be in total at the state hospital, there's sort of be four what we're referring to as sub smart growth districts. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that and, and please feel free to ask questions um, to fill in any gaps that I may have missed. Um, so we're at the question part and Karen, can you give me the screen back so I can see if someone's got their hands raised or anything? Um, uh, 
Are there any questions from any of the members? We have somebody. Uh, I see a raised hand, uh, Member Whitehill. Okay, Member Whitehill. Sorry. Right. No <laughs> problem. I, I uh, just Carolyn, found you. Carolyn, can you just? I don't know if it, if it's simple or not, but can you just say like what is the underlying dwelling units per acre or however you want to term it um, with the underlying zoning is existing and what would be allowed under the um, rezoning? I know that might be a little bit tricky to quantify, but I know we have had some changes to the underlying zoning in some places, so there might be some confusion about what's allowed under sure. both circumstances. Yep. So um, we actually had to do this calculation for um, for the state. To, so we have to do a spreadsheet to the state to prove that this um, overlay actually increases the capacity. And it's really about buy right units. It's not about special permits because they're going to assume anything that requires a special permit is um, is not an allowed use. So without any kind of additional special permits, um, you could do, we figured you could do seven single family detached house lots because there's so much frontage in this on, on this parcel. So you could divide them up into 50 foot um, lots. And so if you could do seven units and then you could do actually two units for each of those parcels. So we're assuming sort of 14 units by right. Um, could be built because with, I mean, just, um, with the overlay um, we calculated you could do about 25 units I think is the total number and and also to clarify without this zoning change anyone who's an affordable housing developer or actually anybody but it's usually people who have expertise in this could follow another state process under chapter 40b um, to build the same number of units and bypass the zoning. So um, this 40R is sort of an easier path because it's through the planning board and still gets you those additional density, that additional density plus the city gets uh, reimbursed for some of the housing units. Whereas under 40B, an applicant would go to the zoning board and ask for waivers from the zoning. And there's, it, you don't get the same density payment from the state. So just, I'm gonna repeat it, what I heard back and you can just let me know if I'm wrong. It's 14 units by right currently, or it would be 25 under 40B currently, but with a whole process or we would go to 40R and it would still be 40R, it would be 25 units, but the city would get a payment, correct? Correct. And, un, but those 25 units, that, that is not a buy right thing. That would be, that would have to go to planning board, correct? It's still a planning board review, but it's called a 40R process, which is parallel to a site plan review, which is still deemed to be an allowed by right use but it still requires planning board review. So under 40R, um, a review for any number of units um, is by the planning board. It's a public hearing. You look at all the technical details of the layout and the drainage, um, the access, lighting, landscaping, all of that is still performed, but it's um, under this separate section that is, is basically the same as a site plan review. Um, other question. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Um, Bill, I have a question if the uh, folks can hear me. We can, George. Go ahead. Could we go back to the map, Carolyn? Yep. Let me just find where I put that. Boy. Hold on just a second. Sorry. I think yeah. I have water in my line. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, where did it go? Okay. You can't get it. Okay. Okay. There. Can you see that, so George? 
I do. So as I understand it, we're in in this uh, amendment. We're <clears throat> including. We're adding two parcels to the Smart Growth C overlay. One on one on uh, Chapel Street and one on Laurel Street. Correct. No, it's just the one that's dotted on the lower left. I was just referencing it because there are three over there are three sub districts at the state hospital A, B, and C, and the purple shows the C, and it's really about the total density and the unit mix. Is it you know single family? Is it townhouse or is it multifamily type of zoning? But the purple dotted line on the lower left, where the big purple arrow is, yep. is the only parcel that's under consideration. And I just showed the other two purple um, polygons um, there to just to show what's already a smart growth C sub district at the state hospital. Thank you. So the one on Chapel Street is being added. Yes. Um, and is it currently part of that recreation field? No, it was separate. It was created as a separate parcel for the purposes of a fire station. So when parcel C, the recreation okay. fields were created, that did not include this piece. Okay, thank you. Um, for George, for context, um, you'll recall this, this site was being considered for a municipal dog kennel um, and uh, which was an allowed use under the existing um, uh, status and uh, it, in the course of the discussions, it was consensus of the neighborhood and, uh, and I think of, of the mayor among others that this would be better used as an opportunity to expand our affordable housing stock. I mean, I don't wanna speak for anybody but that was my understanding of how we got to where we are and now we're obliged to uh, once again, go hat in hand with the state subject to our approval um, to see if uh, to have the state allow us to change the designated use for this slot and include in this overlay. George, go ahead. So given that, Bill, I guess I'm a little surprised that there's nobody from the neighborhood here um, where they, they did come to the hearing about the dog kennel in quite some numbers. Um, but I guess they've been notified. There was a yellow sign posted and maybe we'll see them at another juncture in this process. Well, just I can speak to that, George. Um, <clears throat> there was another juncture of this process. Uh, the Community Resources Committee had a, well, basically a de facto hearing without calling it a hearing. And where, um, and, and Councilor Foster can probably speak to this. I wasn't in attendance, but, um, the, uh, uh, I guess, uh, 10 to 12 uh, folks from the neighborhood did come to speak to that, um, which might account for their absence here today. I think they believe that they've already shared their opinions on that or gotten the question, the answers to their questions uh, were satisfied. And so that may be it. Councilor Foster, can you, uh, can you build on that? I can build on that. Excuse my background. I don't mean to be a disembodied head here. I'm just out in the rain. Um, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I do want to share just a little bit of context, both about, um, you know, sort of the neighborhood um, reaction um, from the proposed municipal animal control facility to, to where we are now with thinking about um, affordable housing. And, and it was like the one of the major objections from the neighborhood regarding the proposed animal control facility was that this area on Chapel Street is um, kind of just outside of Village Hill and it could be a neighborhood on 66, um, you know, Rust Ave is, is a dead end street that's a little bit cut off Chapel. Um, there are uh, density condos right across the street um, and so one of the things that was expressed during that meeting was a desire for more of a neighborhood feel. And so one of the objections, um, there, there were. Foster. 
the proposed Foster, right. control facility kennel would then be cutting land and people really express this desire. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Stop my video. Yeah, you're, 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 yeah, it's a little, yeah, we're, we're probably about 12 seconds behind you and it is starting to freeze up a little bit. So. Okay. Is, is that a little bit better? Or no? Uh, hard to, hard to say. Go ahead and say stuff. And we'll see. Okay. Is that better? Much better. Much better. Okay. Great. All right. Um, combination of headphones and, and um, low bandwidth. Um, so the neighborhood really expressed this desire for more of a neighborhood feel. And one of the concerns around the proposed dog kennel was that it would sort of really cut neighbors off from each other. And they expressed a desire for more housing, playground, families to kind of bring more of a neighborhood feel um, to that area. So that, that was one of the factors. Um, and then at the meeting that the mayor came to, um, it was expressed a desire for more affordable housing. Um, so uh, that, that was something that the neighborhood expressed in a support of, and um, Councillor Dwight, as you mentioned, we did have an extensive meeting with community resources um, where Carolyn Mish came and, and patiently answered a lot of questions. I reached out to people who had come to that meeting um, and uh, several weren't able to make it tonight, but also I think we're, we're seeing that many people had their questions answered. Um, were there any objections or concerns that were expressed that remain unknown? Yes, um, the, the major concern that folks are going to have um, is regarding the density, and I understand it's, it's not known um, given, um, you know, the soil conditions, and we haven't seen um, uh, final plans yet, um, you know, but to sort of picture it, it's, it's a place that's known as um, uh, Sunset Hill, I think it's, it's referred to, it's kind of a, a wide open field where you can see beautiful sunsets, um, backs up to Ellerbrook Field. Um, so definitely that, that is a, a question or, or something that um, the abutters will be following through the process is, is understanding both that affordable housing comes with much higher density and then, you know, that the number of units is, is certainly something that, that will be a question or concern as, as it moves forward. But as far as the actual process, because um, the 25 units would be allowed under, um, you know, our current affordable housing zoning uh, versus changing this to allow for the state incentives, that technicality is is not really the concern that the bigger concern is, is moving forward, but it looks like. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone want to add to that or anyone have any other questions? Um, no, uh, any other comments, neutral, negative, positive, or otherwise? Well, it's just going to be really disappointing for you guys. It's going to be a really brief hearing. If we, I mean, don't want, don't want us to fluff? Okay. Um, all right. I will accept a motion. Oh, yes. Um, I, I do have Go ahead, Sam. It's, it, it's slightly yeah. unrelated to this direct hearing. But one of the things that I'd love the city council to take a look at is really um, is coming up with a number. I mean, I know that, that some of this is state is defined by the state, but like coming up with a number that is, you know, let's say 400,000 and below or 350,000, whatever the number is, so that we actually, when we throw around this term affordable housing, we're not all just hearing what the term, the number that we all have in our own head. But that's an excellent point. And in fact, actually, Karen, would you speak to the standards of affordability uh, or even subsidized uh, properties here? Um, sure. And, um, and uh, it's a changing number. <laughs> um, but when we talk about affordable housing, and we've had several conversations over the last year about um, the, all the different kinds of housing that we need in Northampton, but affordable housing as defined in throughout the Commonwealth and certainly in our zoning is really housing that meets the, that is affordable, that it meets the needs of people um, who are making 80% or less of the area median income 
And um, what that means is dependent upon how big your household is. So there are different um, categories. So there's uh, um, the area median income is defined based on number of households contributing to that, um, to their income. So um, it's really a calculation based on, the, on, on that, um, the income streams. And so, but when we're talking about um, affordable housing in that context, it really is essentially subsidized affordable housing with um, state and federal subsidies and sometimes local um, subsidies. We've also talked about needing a housing for people who are making more than that. So 100 to 175% of the area median income. And, um, you know, that, um, though that kind of housing um, is um, also, that sort of more market rate housing though, the, um, and is not subsidized um, by state and federal dollars. And so, um, there is a, a different, so we need, do we do need to be careful about the terms that we use for this, but when we're talking about this zoning in particular and, ch and getting um, funding from the state, we're talking about housing that's going to be affordable, meaning people are not gonna be paying more than 30% of their income towards um, housing and they also have to be income eligible, meaning they can't make more than what's established as 80% um, of the area median income. So what is the area, what's, what is there, what's 80% of the area income for a family of four? Um, oh. I can look at, I think the last Carolyn. time I looked, it was about 77,000, but I'm not sure I have the numbers. If, I'll have to look, but it obviously if, changes if, over time. Of course. And, and it's for the region. It's not just Northampton. We're lumped in um, with in the region with Springfield. If I sure. might, Carolyn, just so that uh, Mr. Taylor has something to hang his hat on. His, um, I have this thing for the newspaper. The recently the uh, affordable housing up the last units built on the Village Hill, um, which I think are called North Commons, put out a big flyer regarding applications for that. So they listed out a chart of the different medians. So for a family of three, 60% of the area median income is 45,000. For a family of four, it would be you need a maximum income would be 50,000. Family of five, you're up to um, 54,000. So these are, as Carolyn said, they change quite often, but at this point in time, you know, there is a, there's some really um, accessible charts that show those differences. It's not yeah. a lot of money. And each no, no, project I, I has, that. I, I was going to well, say. I, guess, I, I think it's just helpful that it, regardless of, I'm not even looking for exact numbers. I just think that it's helpful that we are all, are, we are all imagining the same, the same number. Right. You make, you make an excellent point, Sam, and it's one that I brought up before, is that affordable is like a Rorschach test for a lot of people. It, 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 it depends whatever they project on it. And, but there are, there are actual criteria that define what affordable is, and there are actual criteria uh, for qualification for subsidies and also for um, um, occupying these properties that would be developed. So that's, I appreciate you making that distinction because uh, we've all been part of these debates and arguments when uh, community members react to, um, in some cases, their sense of what the word affordable means and may be completely wrong. And um, um, Laura Baker ahead, just Karen. put a number in the chat box for what currently um, for a family of four is 68,700, I believe she said, um, for a household of a uh, family of four is the 80% um, threshold. So 67,300. Um, and again, and, and George raised another point too, is different, different developments are targeting different categories. So there's a 60%, there's a 50%, 60, 80, and even then there's 
sort of back on the other end too. So each of those is going to have a different number. That's great. I, I just think that, you know, as long, just like we've talked about before, as long as we just say for the purposes of, of everyone being on the same page, just think of this as $70,000 for, for a family of four. And as our numbers aren't exact, it's just, so we all are thinking about the same number. Right. Good point. Other comments, uh, questions? I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I second it. Well, I'm asking for you to, I, I can't give a motion because I'm presiding. So if you want to be- I move to close please. the public comment. Uh, okay, and second. is there a second? Second. Who's second? Uh, Council okay. Mayor. Okay, Council Mayor. all right. So Member Taylor made the motion, Council Mayor seconded. Okay. Laura, would you please call the roll on closing the public hearing? Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Shara. Councillor Shara texted me that she is having difficulties with her, with the internet. She's having, apparently, waters move further down State Street. State George, Street. Now, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Water in the pipes. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Mayori. Yes. Okay, and Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Let me get up. To, uh, Member Kohout. Yes. Member Elkins. Yes. Member Coriat. Yes. Member Fowler. Yes. Member Taylor. Yes. Member Tate. Yes. Member White. Yes. And Member Whitehill. Yes. Okay, so the hearing is closed. Now, here's a question for George or for Carolyn or for whomever. I don't know if you guys have an agenda beyond this. We're, the uh, Legislative Matters has a couple of other items to deal with, including voting on our minutes and so on. I don't know, I mean, I don't wanna make you suffer through that, but do you guys have uh, a recommendation that you're required to vote on or what? I, I would say that, yes, traditionally, if something like this the planning board makes a motion to recommend um, the zoning amendment up to the council um, after this discussion. So we would entertain a motion for that if anybody has the uh, agenda before them. So I'm for this, for the this part of our show, I'm uh, seating over a uh, 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 chair in to uh, uh, George so that he can preside over his committee. And to answer the second part of your question, um, Bill, no, there's the planning board doesn't have any other items beyond this. So we'll be, we'll be turning off our, our uh, Zoom meeting as soon as we, as soon as we have a, a recommendation. Go well if you want. As I said, there's no Facebook or Instagram. There's not anything left to do on the planet. So <laughs> staying here would be perfectly fine. But go ahead. Have at it. Uh, so George, uh, I would move uh, I would move that we uh, that the planning board uh, rec vote to recommend um, in jail chapter 40A section 5. Oh no, that's wrong. Um, amend the zoning map section 353.4 at Chapel Street referred to community um, to um, as recommended uh, here in the meeting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, we'll take Jana as the second. I'm not sure who <laughs> the other voice was. So the motion's made by Melissa and seconded by Jana. Any discussion? Okay, so we'll move forward with a voice vote. And uh, Laura, I'll take that off your hands. I'll do that for you, okay? Um, no more, don't do that. Okay. Uh, Marissa, how do you yes. vote? Yes. Okay, Melissa, how do you vote? Yes. And Chris? Yes. And Jana? 
Yes. Uh, Sam Taylor? Yes. Okay, and David? Yes. And Corinne? Yes. And I also vote yes, so it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Great seeing Thank everyone. Thank you. I, I appreciate. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you, you're right. Uh, uh, Member Alkins, I believe, has a process question. And I uh, do. We need to close the planning board portion of the meeting. Do we need to vote and adjourn it? I, that portion of it. I, I think that would be appropriate. Well, then I would move uh, to adjourn uh, the planning board portion of uh, this joint meeting. I second. Thank you, Thank Jan. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion to keep this part of the meeting going? No. Okay, we'll go through that voice vote again. Marissa. Yes, please. And Melissa. Yes. Thank you. And Chris. Yes. And David Whitehill. Yeah. Have let yes. Okay, <laughs> Sam Taylor. Yes. All right, who else? Chris? Yes, again, twice. Thank you. Jana, the names. Yes. All the names have disappeared from our Hollywood squares, at least on my screen. And the chair votes yes also. So it's unanimous. We are adjourning. It's great Thank to see you. Thank you all everyone. very much. I appreciate you doing this. Take care. Thank you, Carolyn. Bye bye. Nothing personal, but I'm going to go. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Okay, so uh, Council Chair, are you able to communicate or are you just stuck there on mute? I think so. Yeah. You all can hear me. Oh, yeah. It yeah. did. All right. The same thing that happened at Council last time happened again, where suddenly I couldn't do anything and all the things, all the boxes started going blank and then everything ended. I, so I understand there's water in the pipes. <laughs> it's moving this way down State Street from Georgia's, I guess. It's kind of skipped over me, oddly it's enough, which is a little you. weird. Okay. I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> so if I blank out, you know what happened. Just, yeah. not, I'm not having a stroke. It's just the water. Okay. Um, so we, um, we also have, now we have two items to address here now. now I can't even get out of this. Uh -oh. I'm so uh -oh. upset. What? Um, there we go. I I just muted that person who might be having the same problem I was having. They can't get out of it, and they're very upset about something. It's it's very odd. You do get like trapped, and I you have to yeah. I had to force quit my computer. So. Yep, okay. it happened to me twice. Yeah. Would it be helpful okay. if I put the person in the waiting room? I guess um, I, I don't know. I mean, they may be attending yeah. for the legislative matters. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to presume. So, um, so we have two items now. Before actually, we have three items. First item is the minutes. Um, as Laura has said, we have the uh, minutes from June fourteenth, twenty twenty one. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? Move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Councilor Shara made the motion. Councilor Thorpe second. Discussion about the minutes. It was a while ago, back in June, which was the last time we convened. No discussion. Uh, Laura, please call the roll for acceptance. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Mayori. Yes. And Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Okay. And it's approved. Um, so why don't we slip back to item number five, which is after, well, the item that's on the item number five relative to a recommendation. Um, this is to, to, I would accept the motion on a recommendation or not on uh, chapter 40A, section five. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not it again. I just did what um, Commissioner Elkins did. Uh, about the uh, proposed zoning changes uh, appeal for Chapel Street. Move a positive uh, recommendation. Second. Okay. Councilor Maori, second. Um, discussion on the recommendation. 
Okay. Uh, Laura, please call the roll on a favorable recommendation. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, that's done. And now the other item is relatively perfunctory. And in fact, I'll even read it just for purposes of uh, uh, for people following along. This is on the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, uh, be it or <clears throat> ordained by the City Council in the City of Northampton, the City Council assembled as follows that section. 5-5 of the Code of Ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts be amended so that such section shall read as follows under compensation of elected officials. Uh, compensation, we will be deleting the city clerk from that designation. And, also, and that's an A. And then B, uh, benefits and expenses, we will also be deleting city clerk and also changing and removing, this is something from, uh, from uh, charter review discussion, removing the also known as superintendents of Smith Agricultural School. Um, and so I'll accept a motion and put this on the floor and then we can have a, we can talk about it. Move a positive recommendation. Second. Second, and second by Councilor Thorne, okay. Um, just so you know that that uh, we all know about the city clerk, and if anyone has any questions, we can plan on that. But the city clerk is no longer an elected position; thereby, is not compensated as such, and will be going on um, probably, thankfully, on a more uh, structured salary system as per uh, the criteria of uh, HR here in the city, as opposed to the whims of the city council when they decide to raise. <laughs> Uh, elected officials um, salaries, which is rare and infrequent. The elimination also known as Superintendent Smith Agricultural School, the, the trustees have been called alternately historically for at least the last four decades as superintendents or trustees, thus creating certain challenges because they also have a superintendent. So it, it, <laughs> made things a little confusing. And uh, that was one of the cleanup recommendations in the charter changes that were approved by the legislature and signed by the governor. And that we just delete all references, uh, all references of superintendent when it was, when the intent was to suggest trustees. And they are hereby from this point on subject to, to be called the, by, as trustees and nothing else. The, the problem is we also, as we go through all the various orders and so on and uh, the charter, there's still little cleanup parts. So that's just to simply to sign off and approve, on, uh, approve that removal. Um, any other questions or discussion about this? Well, Laura, you know what to do. You're uh, muted, Laura. On mute. <laughs> you almost know what to do. There you go. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. All right. That proceeds um, to the council with a favorable recommendation as well. We have no other business before us um, except one last item. For those of you inclined, I'd wait to hear. Move to adjourn. Oh, there we go. Motion to adjourn Second. by Council Maori. Second by Council Shara. There is no discussion despite George's thoughts of um, a motion to adjourn. So, Laura, please do the honors. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. And Councilor Thorpe. Yes. We are adjourned. I'm really grateful for you guys showing up and I appreciate it, even though it felt slightly redundant. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Short meeting. Yeah. Short meeting. Go for it. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.